All right, great. Thank you so much for joining us here today um, for this webinar here. So we are going to be going over why Crowdfunder is an unlikely hero and the most creator-friendly crowdfunding platform on the market at the moment. And today we have the lovely David Bratch here, who is the president of Connection Point, which is the, um, the company that has Crowdfunder under its wing. And David actually was the one who pioneered and saw this gap in the market and started this Crowdfunder and really helped mold it into what it is today and is the visionary behind it. So we we're very lucky to have him with us here to kind of give us some insight and go through that. And this session will be recorded. So if you do have to step away for any kind of moments or anything like that, it will be available to you after, as well as another few housekeeping items is that we do have you on mute just so that we are able to make sure that there aren't any awkward interruptions or awkward any um, unmuting moments with Zoom, but you are able to use the question and answer function um, just to type some questions in. So if you do have any questions as we go, please, please, please feel free to ask them and we will be able to get to them in chat or I will be able to stop David and kind of ask them in the moment and create that discussion. Because if you have these questions, somebody else may as well. So it's definitely great to ask them and have that dialogue going. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to David and we'll get this presentation started here. Thanks, Campbell. I really appreciate it. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Yep, loud and clear. And we just need to uh, just share screen there. Okay, I will. All right. Um, so thanks everyone for joining. I really appreciate uh, your taking the time to learn more about Crowdfunder. Um, I am going to share my screen. A moment. And is that clear? Perfect. Okay, great. So um, first I wanted to thank Comics Wellspring. Um, they uh, really did a um, phenomenal job in reaching out to their community to, um, to invite you to this webinar. Um, they have been uh, super helpful in helping us uh, understand a lot more about the printing and fulfillment side of things. Uh, and um, from what I understand from their customers, they are pretty great. And so I'm assuming that you, um, as their customers have already experienced that, don't need to go into that much further. Um, but the Comics Wellspring is offering a promotion uh, where if you do run a campaign on Crowdfunder and include their banner, uh, then you can get 15% off of your printing with them. Uh, so more details on that are forthcoming. But if you are planning on doing a crowdfunder campaign, please do reach out to us or to them uh, to make sure that you can take uh, uh, advantage of the 50% discount that they're offering. All right. So crowdfunder, an unlikely hero. Um, and we uh, we thought we'd uh, put this into that context for you guys and, and tell you really about why um, why we see Crowdfunder as a much more creative, creator-friendly crowdfunding platform. So as Kemble had said, I'm David Barish. I'm president of Connection Point. Um, you can reach me at that email address. Uh, and also I am on Twitter at, um, at Barish. You can see that in my name, I think, in the webinar. Um, and uh, so do feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, I'm happy to to help and to connect with you on that. So let's talk about um, this is this is what we're going to be talking about today, right? This is what uh, we're going to talk about in relation to Crowdfunder. We're going to go through this as if it were a comic book. Um, so we've got our origin story. We'll learn about uh, Crowdfunder's special powers um, uh, about the the villain that we uh, have to overcome. Um, and the obstacles, and of course, uh, victory. Talk about what that means. And then afterwards, we'll also uh, look at some example campaigns um, and be able to talk through them and answer any questions that you have uh, about Crowdfunder as a whole or um, specific functionality uh, as it relates to different campaigns. So the origin story. So Crowdfunder is a platform of a company called Connection Point. Connection Point's been around since 2009. And so um, while Crowdfunder itself is only six months old right now, uh, the company behind Crowdfunder has been doing crowdfunding for 12 years. The platform that we built is extremely powerful. Um, it's been tested over years. We have raised over a quarter of a billion dollars across 200,000 campaigns in over 100 countries. Um, and so, yes, uh, there, the availability of Crowdfunder is pretty much worldwide. Basically, anywhere where you can set up a Stripe or PayPal account, you can use Crowdfunder. Uh, and so we'll go into a little bit more about how that works um, from a financial perspective, financial management perspective. 
but um, so the crowdfunder has been a long time. Uh, uh, Connection Point's been doing this for a very long time, but crowdfunder is really new. Um, and the first platform that Connection Point launched was a platform called Fundraiser. And Fundraiser, um, sorry, before we go forward, I just want you to take a look at, at the campaign that we have on the screen, Cancor Collected Edition Hardcover by Matthew Allison. Um, we're going to talk about Matthew Allison in a moment. So Fundraiser was a platform that was really focused very much on social good. And, um, and what we saw was that there were other uh, people using the platform that were not just doing social good campaigns, but that were doing campaigns that were related to the arts or that were campaigns that were related to healthcare or, um, or pet care. And what we decided to do was that it made sense for us to really take a look at the audiences that are the most successful in Fundraiser and build platforms that were going to be tailored toward their specific needs. And so what we did is we in, uh, we set out in 2022 to launch a platform called CocoPay for healthcare fundraising. Uh, and we were thinking about doing Coco, uh, Crowdfunder in 2023. What happened was though, is that um, Matthew Allison um, uh, it, back uh, early in 2022 uh, decided that he wanted to run a collected edition campaign for Cancor, and um, but he didn't want to do it on Kickstarter. Hold on a second. I apologize. This is horribly rude, but I'm going to sneeze. And that is recorded for posterity. All right. So... Um, <laughs> So Matthew didn't want to use um, a, um, a uh, another crowdfunding platform um, because of certain decision that it had made in early uh, 2022, and he went out to ask the source of all knowledge and wisdom, Reddit, what platform he should use. And the the answer that he got from a bunch of people was to check out Fundraiser. And if you actually if you search for alternatives to Kickstarter, you'll see that Fundraiser comes up sometimes as the top choice um, by reviewers and usually in the top five, even though fundraiser wasn't really designed to serve as an alternative to um, to Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or the other um, rewards-based crowdfunding campaign uh, platforms, because it had rewards-based crowdfunding in it, um, it was being used as an alternative. So Matthew came in and he set a goal of $25,000 for his campaign, as we can see back here. Mm -hmm. uh, and they ended up getting $62,000. And I think one thing I want to point out really quickly here is that that number that you see, $62,000, is his actual goal. It does not include shipping. Um, he actually raised uh, over $72,000, $73,000 overall in the campaign, um, the, including shipping. But we do not show the goal in shipping. And we you don't have to um, include shipping in your goal when you set it in the first place. Uh, so he was very happy with this. And we reached out to him. We talked to him about it. And he said, you know, I think there are a lot of other comics creators that would be really interested in what you're doing. But fundraiser doesn't feel right. And so we asked him to gather a group of comics creators. And we said to them, hey, we are planning on launching Crowdfunder next year. What do you think? And they said, please do it now. So that meeting was in March. And on June 21st, we launched Crowdfunder. So that is the origin story. What are Crowdfunder's special powers? So, um, you know, when you, uh, when you start looking at, um, at um, uh, at, at the, the power of the um, connection point platform that underlies both fundraiser and crowdfunder now, you really see that this is a, um, a platform that is very distinctive and it stands differently and above, I think, uh, some of the other platforms that are out there. And a lot of it has to do with the difference in our business model. So we never touch the money, uh, unlike other platforms. Uh, all of the money goes directly to you, the creator, through your uh, PayPal, your Stripe account, um, and we don't ever touch it at any point. And that gives us both a tremendous amount of um, freedom in how we can uh, set up the platform to serve you. But more importantly, the platform is set up to serve you. You are our customer because um, you're the one that's paying us. In the case of other platforms the, where they collect the funds and then they pay the creator, the creator is a supplier to them and their customer is the supporter. And because of that dis differentiation, um, our focus is more on the creators and not on the customers because we focus on who's paying us. Uh, other platforms are not focusing on the creators who are paying them. They're focusing on the supporters because those are the ones or the backers because those are the ones that are actually paying them and then they pay their suppliers. 
Um, and if you have questions about that, we can talk about that a little bit later. So one of the things that we can do because of that is we can make it free. Um, and you, the creator, you get to decide how we get paid. Um, so these are the options for you. The first one is simply free. In that case, you would only pay for your payment processing fees through Stripe or uh, PayPal. Uh, and then we ask your supporters to give us a tip for making the platform free. If they tip us, we get paid. And if they don't, then we don't charge you anything. Um, you simply pay your payment processing fees. Now, we've been doing, like I said, we've been doing this for 12 years. Uh, and so we know how this works and we know how, um, how, what would generate the way people behave. And so we do get paid. You don't have to worry about us, um, not getting paid or going under or anything like that because, um, because we do in this model, we are getting paid. The nearly free model is the one that's really the most popular with people because it brings the cost of crowdfunding down really, really low. How does that happen? So we ask your supporters to cover both our 5% platform fee and the credit card fees and um, uh, on your on your behalf, right? And so in the checkout process, they're asked for an additional 8.5% or so to 8.5% to 9% um, to cover your fees for you. 90% of people do. And the reason why they do it is because they're excited about your campaign. They really want it to succeed. They kind of feel like they're co-producing it with you because you know the 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 project is only going to happen uh, if uh, if it gets funded, and so for them to put in an extra two, maybe even three dollars to help support you even more is really no big deal. And they're excited about the campaign, and so you know at that moment they're willing to do it. So, like I said, ninety percent of the people do, and what that does because they're covering both our fee and the credit card fees, it brings the cost of crowdfunding down to below 2%, sometimes below 1%. Um, we could take a look at some examples a little bit uh, later on, um, but that is even lower for you than the Simply Free plan. It's The nearly free plan is cheaper. And the reason why is because in the Simply Free plan, you still have to pay three and a half to 4% to uh, Stripe or PayPal for payment processing. So, Three and a half to four percent with simply free, one to two percent with nearly free, uh, and sometimes even lower than one percent in nearly free. That's really pretty cheap. Not free is the model that you're all used to. If you've crowdfunded in the past with any of the other platforms, they charge you five percent plus payment payment processing fees. Usually ends up somewhere between eight and a half and ten percent. Um, and so when you compare not free to nearly free with eight and a half to 10% versus one to 2%, you can see the significant difference and why it is really, really cost-effective to use CrowdFunder for your crowdfunding. Um, we also have, again, in our special powers theme, um, uh, uh, some, some functionality that we that we provide because we really want you to be able to do business the way you want to do business. We want your supporters to be able to get the rewards the way they want to get them. So first off, you can do an all or nothing or a keep it all campaign. All or nothing means um, what you're pretty familiar with. Uh, if you are, if you run a campaign, you set a deadline, you set a goal. If you reach the goal, then the campaign is successful and it's funded. If you don't reach the goal, then nothing happens. You get nothing. Nobody gets charged. It's as if, you know, the whole thing didn't happen. In a keep it all scenario, you basically can um, set a goal and set a deadline in order to generate all the excitement that you normally would around a crowdfunding campaign. But um, from the very first uh, donation that comes in, the very first contribution that comes in to support your campaign, that money starts flowing directly into your account. So on day one, the money will flow into your account um, in a uh, keep it all campaign. And usually you'd want to do a keep it all campaign when uh, you have all the art done, everything's ready. It's just a matter of deciding how much to go to print, or if you want to do stretch goals, um, you know, uh, um, are you going to be able to reach those stretch goals? And then that will decide how you're going to go to print, that sort of thing. But um, but if you don't have to um, set an all or nothing because you know you're going to be producing this particular item anyway, then a keep it all campaign is really a good way to go. We also have more reward choices. So that means that um, unlike with other platforms where you have to select the the your supporter has to select a tier and then maybe some add-ons afterwards, but they mostly have to select a tier. With us, 
they can choose any reward that you have that you've set up. So you can set up rewards that are, um, you know, that you can set up one that, you know, just individual items, you can set up bundles, you can set up whatever you want, and they can add in as many as they want of those. And again, we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. Um, and, um, and, and just essentially, it's almost like filling up a basket. Um, I'd mentioned the real goal numbers. So the goals, um, um, the goal does not include shipping. So you don't have to worry about missing your goal or, or setting a, a higher goal than you actually need because you don't know how much shipping is going to cost. You can also run multiple campaigns at once, at once with us. You don't have to wait until your campaign is fulfilled in order to start another campaign. The reason why we do that is because we look at crowdfunding as a way to connect with your audience, as a way to build your audience. And so if you do multiple campaigns, you are constantly in front of mind for your audience. Even if they're just small campaigns that are, you know, add-ons to a previous campaign or an alternative cover or a different kind of collection or a reprint or, you know, a, a, a toy or a stuffy that's related to your previous campaign, the more that you're in front of your, um, in front of your audience, the, the more they're likely to support you, the more that they're going to help you grow your audience through their friends. Um, also, you can, um, I see we have a question. Yeah, we have a great question. So do we promote campaigns like Kickstarter does? Yeah, that's a really great question. So Crowdfunder is six months old. Uh, what that means is that we don't have the same uh, the same kind of traffic or the same kind of audience that Kickstarter has. Um, and so, no, we don't have the ability to um, to drive people that are randomly on the site over to your campaign. Um, and to be honest, um, not the other platforms don't necessarily have a tremendous amount of ability to do that. Um, it does happen uh, if you are selected as a project that they love, um, or if they send an email out about you, uh, you kind of have to have connections there or, or, you know, kind of be very lucky in order for that to happen. Um, and it does happen. Uh, but we don't have that same sort of marketing power at this point. Uh, and so, no, we we can't do that in the same way. That said, we do post about our campaigns in our social media. Um, we do have um, um, other ways that we are promoting campaigns. Um, but right off the bat, uh, I will tell you, and, and I was planning on talking about this a little bit later, um, we're a new platform. We don't have that volume. We do think, though, that the savings of about 8% in the cost of your campaign could compensate pretty significantly for whatever bump you might have gotten in another in another platform. Um, and so it's something that really is uh is something that is worth it for you to look at and decide. Um, do the other benefits that are that are here uh for you in your particular situation, um, are they going to help you um and make crowdfunder the right choice for you? It may not be, and that's okay. Um, it may be that you want to run campaigns on more than one platform, which is fine. You can run campaigns with us. You can run campaigns with someone else. Uh, you can flip back and forth. You can do it however you like. One thing though, is that, um, when you are running a campaign with us, you have a direct relationship with your customers because they're paying you directly. Uh, and so you have their contact information. We encourage them to subscribe to you as an organization so you can communicate with them directly. You don't have to communicate with them through us. Um, other platforms do force you to communicate with them through their platform because they are their customers. They're not your customers. When a campaign is over, you can automatically roll it over into a store, uh, which is a really cool feature. And a campaign can keep going until you decide. Uh, and so what that means is that all of the SEO that you may have built up, all of the links, all of the the, all the effort that you made to get into live streams and podcasts uh, to send people to that campaign um, is still active. So you can leave it open for as long as you want and still sell out of that campaign as if it were a store until you're out of stock or until you decide that you want to close it and sell it somewhere else. We also, like I mentioned, uh, we don't touch the money and therefore there's no hold on funds. So as soon as you hit your goal, with an, an all or nothing campaign, even if it's on day one, if you hit your goal on day one, you can fund on day one and you can receive the, that money on day one. Uh, so we don't put any holds on it. Uh, you don't have to wait until the campaign is over if you've hit your goal and, um, and you don't have to wait the extra two to sometimes three weeks 
for the platform to issue your money to you. It's your money, you get it right away. We also have uh, something that we call Crowdfunder Professional. Um, it is not only for, for indie publishers, it's also for uh, creators that are looking for more advanced functionality. So you don't have to uh, be a publisher to use this, um, but it's something that really does benefit publishers that are working with multiple creators uh, because they can add their team members uh, with permissions across all campaigns to be able to manage the, the, uh, the campaigns um, together. Um, but they can also uh, add their creators as team members on only the campaigns that they're using for those creators um, and that way the creators can participate in the campaign, promote, engage, respond to people um, and be a part of what's going on. They're seeing, see what's happening um, and they only have access to their campaigns uh, that are within that, that publisher. Uh, also, we allow you to use your branding, not ours. So your logo will replace our logo. You can put your own menu items at the masthead of the page to send people over to your website or to your, um, or to your uh, YouTube channel or to wherever it is that you want to do it. We allow you to customize the page uh, in a way that it becomes your page uh, and your campaign uh, and your profile. Uh, we also allow charitable projects for those uh, charitable organizations. We even do the tax receipt uh, management and send out the tax receipts. Um, and we also allow offline supporting. Uh, so if you're at a convention and somebody wants to support your campaign, you can take money from them there on the spot and then just record it in your campaign afterward. You don't have to send them uh, make them have to go to the page and do it there on the page. And then finally, um, you can also get a verified badge and that gives you the ability to upload more contacts um, and gain, like I said, the blue tick. Um, and it does not cost $8. It costs nothing, um, but you can uh, become a verified organization with us also. Okay, so there's always an evil foil, right? Every hero has their kryptonite. And in our case, it's what I what we had, you had asked about earlier and what we have talked about. Um, people don't really yet, the audience uh, does not yet have the same awareness about Crowdfunder that they do about Kickstarter. And so um, the only way that we're going to be able to build that, that kind of uh, uh, awareness is by having more campaigns on Crowdfunder. And so if Crowdfunder is right for you, if Crowdfunder is right for your friends, the more people that come over, uh, the more than we will, that we will have that kind of an audience and that kind of a presence. Um, we do do some additional things that um, we think are, are helpful in building your audience and building your campaigns. Um, and again, like I said, they become your audience uh, and, and your customers. Um, we do have built into the platform a tremendous amount of, um, of encouragement to have... Uh, the campaigns, the, the supporters uh, share your campaign socially uh, in a variety of ways. We have uh, our post contribution workflow where we ask them to share um, in the, in the uh, acknowledgement that they get sent, they're asked to share in uh, updates um, in, in a variety of ways they're asked to share your campaign. And really they are the best brand ambassadors for you. Uh, if they're, if they say, if they tell their friends that they like what you're doing, um, then you, they are more likely to bring in um, people to support you. Uh, and that is a much better way of getting the word out and spreading it um, than being on a platform that has 200 other um, campaigns that look like yours that um, you may or may not be discovered next to. Um, so it's, uh, it's just a good, another good way that we support you, but we do not have the audience yet. It's, uh, it's something that we're aware of, something that we're working on, and something that we hope that um, um, not only as time go on, goes on will make a difference, but we do think that with the work that we do on the social side that, um, and some other things that we are developing uh, related to recommendations, that um, we should be able to catch up uh, before too long. Overcoming obstacles. Um, and so... You know, we know that um, that there are um, uh, things that we want to add into the platform to make it even better, to serve you even better, to help you build up your um, your audience, to build up your brand even better. And so, one thing that we're doing is we are developing an integrated messaging system that will help you communicate with your supporters from any campaign. So that means that if uh, a supporter has subscribed to receive updates from you. 
then you can update them all from one central place and not have to post updates into each of the previous campaigns and run the risk of people getting multiple updates from you uh, about the same thing. So uh, an integrated messaging system for communicating with all of your customers that have, uh, that have specified that they would like to receive updates from you. Um, we're also building a recommendation feature. And the way that's going to work is that you will be able to recommend other creators on the platform whose work you like. And, um, and then those recommendations will be shown to your, your supporters. Um, and then uh, there's a certain reciprocity element to this, that if you're recommending somebody, then that's somebody that you want in your circle and they will be recommending you instead of leaving this up to an algorithm that could show whatever is optimized for that particular buyer, um, for that particular customer of that platform, um, we're, we want to put the hands, the control in the hands of the creator so that creators can decide what ends up showing up on their pages. And I know that a lot of you are doing this, that you'll post in updates, uh, you'll cross promote with other campaigns from your friends that are live at this time. And this is the way to do it automatically um, with the people that you, um, it could be that you're not necessarily aware that a friend of yours has a campaign or somebody that you appreciate has a campaign up now, this will automatically recommend it for you. And then on the fulfillment, fulfillment side, we're looking at figuring out um, ways to do a, a shipping and cost calculator um, and to do postage printing. Um, that is a big um, item to solve, but it's one that we are looking to tackle and hopefully we'll be able to come up with an answer on that. Okay, so what is victory, right? Um, is, it, uh, is it defeating your foil? Is it uncovering truths? Or maybe it's just the opportunity to serve people that you care about. So for us, we are, victory is supporting you. We, we are committed to supporting you. We want to help you grow your audience. We want you to be successful in your campaigns. Um, we want to give you the flexibility to run your business the way you want to run it using different campaign types, um, having the money flow to you directly, being able to communicate with, um, with all of your supporters directly, um, do uh, uh, be able to, to, to set up your rewards in a way that you feel is the most beneficial, um, and a variety of other things. Uh, the flex We want to give you the, the, the flexibility to do things your way and to really support you growing and building your own audience. So that's what we would consider to be victory. Uh, one way that we do that to support uh, creators is we have our creator hub. Um, and when you go to, um, to um, crowdfunder.com in the very top menu, you'll see a link for the creator hub. This is a free resource for you. Um, you've all actually been there because you signed up for this webinar through the creator hub, but um, you may not have noticed the things that are available in there. Uh, there is community in there where you can, um, uh, you can create a profile and follow and connect with the other people that are in there. You can post to the forums, ask questions, uh, promote your stuff, um, and get to you know uh, interact with other creators. We have our toolkits, which I really, really highly recommend. We've got some incredible toolkits in there that um, that will tell you all about um, developing a strategy around crowdfunding, how to um, build, borrow, or buy uh, market uh, an audience to. Um, to help grow your audience. Um, and there are other marketing tips and campaign tips in there. So I, I do suggest you take a look at the toolkits. Kemble runs office hours twice a week, and that's basically um, an open session where you can come in and ask them anything you want uh, at any time. You just uh, just um, just sign up and uh, and come right in and you can talk to them about whatever you whatever your uh, whatever your heart desires. You can ask them for feedback on your campaign. Um, you can ask for uh, um, um, any set of questions, really anything that you need. And then, uh, of course, you can also put in feature requests and bug reports. And we do take obviously the bug reports very seriously, but we also do look at the feature requests. In fact, in the past six months, we've already implemented quite a few feature requests that we received from um, from a bunch of different creators. So that is the first part of our session um, where we run through the presentation. Uh, we can do a really quick um, Q&A here if there are any questions before we go right into taking a look at the platform itself. Yeah, <clears throat> let's see here. 
So just if you had one question about <clears throat> just creating accounts. So you are able to create an account without having a project. And I just added the link in that, um, in the answer right there to be able to go in and create an account without starting a project. And we also have a question from Andrew. The fulfillment feature is absolutely huge. One of the biggest risks for running physical reward campaigns is shipping costs and needing uh, to align postage and printing to fulfillment. Really excited about that. Is there a target date for that yet? Unfortunately, I can't give you a target date. Um, it really does depend a lot on us developing a partnership with uh, an, a um, with a vendor that we feel will be able to provide us with um, with good real time information. Um, there is always the challenge, though, that any information that you get real time um, for you know today and uh, collect the shipping on that, um, then there is also uh, the risk that, you know, when you are ready to fulfill in two months, that, that shipping price may change. And so we uh, we're looking at ways to address that, including um, a buffer. Uh, so if, you know, if shipping comes back and it's, you know, $2.30, um, we may give you the option to decide, I would like to put in a 10% buffer on everything or a 20% buffer on everything or something like that. So we're really, really looking at this very carefully um, and I think that it is likely going to be um, at least in the second half of this year, uh, or maybe even the, the fourth quarter of this year, that we'll uh, be able to get something completed for that. And we also have another great question here from Vito. So do we have any dedicated comics representatives or any other major categories you serve like collectibles? And I think this would be a great time to talk about Z Month, maybe just intro that. So um, for yes, so we have uh, we do have our um, our um, um, what's your title head of uh, head of creator outreach, um, and that is a person who is um, is really focused right now on working with comics creators. Uh, her name is Rachel, and um, if you'd like to reach out to her, it's Rachel at crowdfunder dot um, Rachel is R A C H E L. That's E-L at the end. Some people spell it with an A at the end, but there is no A. It's R-A-C-H-E-L at crowdfunder.com. Um, and she, of course, will be happy to help you with anything that you need. Um, our focus last year was on comics. This year, we're going to be focusing also on tabletop role-playing games, TTRPG. Um, but this year, it's going to be comics and TTRPG is where we're, we're going to be focusing most of our, um, our outreach energy. Um, we do have campaigns in a variety of other categories that are in crowdfunder, but um, that's really the, those are the two communities that we are really most interested in being a part of. And I think the main reason why is because comics came to us initially. They, they wanted us to, um, um, they wanted us to, um, to, to support them. And, uh, and ever since we started doing that, the community has been, so welcoming, so warm, so collaborative and supportive. And uh, it's just been a huge, huge joy to be working with this community. So me personally, I, um, I have a, a bachelor's degree in screenwriting and a master's in uh, fiction writing. And so I come from a, a writing background. Um, but uh, when, I, when I finished grad school, I got a marketing job um, with a nonprofit and, um, and really was drawn to nonprofit, um, to the nonprofit world and, and, to, uh, and to online fundraising. And so I've been doing online uh, crowdfunding fundraising for nonprofits, businesses, et cetera, for now 22 years. Um, and I will say that the last six months that I've been working almost exclusively with comics creators have been the most fun that I have had in my entire career doing this. So... This is a community that we love and that we really care about and uh, and we are committed to. Awesome. Yeah, let's get everyone just like a few more seconds here. If you have any questions, just toss them in the Q&A or I think we can move on to the second uh, second portion. But great questions, everyone. And it's great to engage and kind of have these conversations. And um, yeah, definitely appreciate all the question and the engagement. Oh, all right. And also, is there an app and can we see an example of a campaign dashboard? I think we're heading into yes. the campaign dashboard and do we have an app? So we do not have a, <clears throat> um, a native mobile app uh, for iOS or Android, um, but all of, uh, all of what we do is responsive web. And so um, it is really pretty straightforward to use on the web. I have gotten some feedback 
from people that say that um, the web experience in Crowdfunder is actually a whole lot easier. Yeah. Pur purchasing uh, on the web experience in Crowdfunder in mobile was a whole lot easier than purchasing in a, another platform's app. So, um, you know, there is that side of it. But, uh, but no, we do not, we do not have an app. Um, and, um, but that is not something that we in, are intending to build anytime soon. Also, just one question. Are we able to register our account using a pen name if we pen publish under the pen name or does it have to be uh, a legal name? Um, you can absolutely, uh, um, set up your account under a pen name. Um, the best way to do that really is to set up an organization as your pen name. Um, your personal name is needed um, for um, for the purposes of setting up your payment stuff, right? So, um, so that part of it you do need to do. But yes, you can you can absolutely use a pen name um, when you um, when you set up the your account. So, feel free to do that. In fact, now that I think about it, you can actually set up your personal account with your pen name also. So if you want to use Crowdfunder personal, not Crowdfunder professional, um, then you should feel free to uh, to do that with a pen name as well. All right, shall I continue? All right, let me, sorry, I'm just going to move my screen so that I'm looking at you. Is everything still visible? Yep. Yep, we can see. Okay. Okay, great. So this is the this is the the front page of uh, of Crowdfunder, and um, as you can see, we have a carousel of uh, some staff picks. We do have a spotlight, uh, Tabletop Nonstop, which is a TTRPG spotlight that we're going to be running uh, starting in January. And then, of course, you know, like many other websites, there's information about who we are and what we do. Um, but let's get into taking a look a little bit at um, at campaigns. Just so you know, for browsing purposes, um, you, people can come in and they can browse campaigns by trending, most recent, et cetera, and then by categories. Um, and then also I had mentioned the Creator Hub, which I think most of you have already seen. That link is right here. Um, and I also um, encourage you to check out some of the other information that we have here. In particular, our Help Center is pretty useful. And, um, and if you want to know a little bit more about who we are and what we care about, then um, we do publish our code of ethics right here. So um, let's take a look at, um, at a, just a, a regular small campaign from um, one of the creators that used our platform. This is, the, um, this is the actual admin interface and you can lock this open, um, this menu bar right here, or you can collapse it. I like to collapse it while we're doing a demo so you can see what's going on. Um, and we're gonna do a really quick anatomy of a page um, as the, as the uh, supporter would see it. And then we can dig in a little bit more into um, some of the aspects of the setup that, um, that I think you guys might be interested in and certainly do ask questions along the way. Uh, this can be a little bit more free flowing um, with um, Kemble interrupting me at, uh, at any time. Um, than, than before when we were just talking about the background. Okay, so the anatomy of the page. Um, this is the, um, this sort of hero image here um, can also be a video. Uh, you can set what the flat image is and then, uh, and then also set a video. Um, and then here we have our sharing bar. This is where we really encourage supporters to share it but also it gives you some really cool additional tools. So for example, um, you can grab a QR code for your campaign. You can download that and put that into anything that you want. If you want to use bookmarks or if you have somewhere else that you think that a QR code can be helpful, you can go ahead and grab that there. Additionally, you can embed this on your website. So we want to support you. And if you're using Crowdfunder professionally, you can actually get additional embed um, uh, um, formats where you can put multiple campaigns in like a carousel or in a grid. Um, but for the most part, we want to give you the ability to embed your campaign on your site or wherever it is that you want to have it. Um, we have a few different variations of it, which you can choose from, you know, whatever you think looks best and uh, you can get the code and then embed it into your own site. Um, and then there are some additional sharing options. And of course, people can subscribe to your campaign 
Um, when you're doing a pre-launch, uh, our pre-launch page is essentially the whole campaign, but these buttons are grayed out and you can't contribute. Um, and you can, so you can show people in advance what's coming, what are the rewards, the whole story, the whole thing. Um, and not just, you know, one sort of like thumbnail of, uh, of what it's going to look like. So, um, you have your story, your highlight, your updates and your activity. Um, and, um, and then the story is here and the rewards here on the side. You can see that the rewards have images associated with each one. Every reward has an image. In fact, you can also click on the reward itself um, and it will take you to a separate page for the reward. So each page, each reward has its own page and on that page it'll show other rewards that are available for that campaign. So if you wanted to direct somebody to a specific reward you can give them the link to this page. And this also has a certain element of SEO optimization that um, allows the, the, the end search engines to spider these pages individually uh, for a little bit more presence. Um, you can also embed videos inside your campaign. You can even embed a live stream in here, a YouTube live stream in here, if you wanted to do a live stream directly from your campaign. Um, but you, know, you build your story, you can put in banners, you put in images, you can see um, all the different um, Cam, um, covers that they've done on the side here. And you'll also notice that these are all set up as individual items. You don't have to create tiers. You don't have to bundle things together. You can create tiers and you can create bundles if you wanted to, um, but you don't have to. You can let people um, select a la carte those things that are interesting to them uh, that they want to have. So this is a, you know, a really nice looking campaign. Um, we'll just uh, jump down to the updates. Um, here you can see, you since we're in the admin section, you can go ahead and post an update um, directly from the front end of the site. Um, and then you can also sort of see which updates have already been posted. And then of course, there's an activity feed that shows you uh, everybody that's contributed. You can comment on it. You can share this, um, this update and of course, like it. And then you as an admin also have the ability to delete these, um, these, up, these uh, um, activity posts. So what that means is that if somebody um, posts something by mistake and they say, I didn't mean to have that up there, you have the ability to take that down. Or if somebody says something offensive to you, you also have the ability to take that down. Uh, yes, Kemble. Great question here from Vito as well. So what kind of analytics to su support do we have? So the what we what we want to do is um again we want to empower you to be able to have control over the way you do stuff so what that means is that when you go into your uh to setting up your campaign um you can i'll go back to the general analytics first but beforehand you can go in um you can set up your twitter message for when people click on that but also you can put in your own google analytics link in here so you get all of the analytics about your campaign. You can slice and dice it however you want. You don't have to rely on us to tell you that we drove this much traffic to your campaign, um, which is not always a reliable measure of how the traffic came in and how, um, how people came to support you. If you do AdWords, you can do AdWord conversion tracking here. Um, and you can also put in the Facebook uh, pixel or meta pixel uh, in order to be able to track what activity is coming specifically from Facebook. So there's that side of it, right? This is again, us putting the power in your hands to know exactly what's going on. But if you wanna also look at our analytics that we provide you, we show you in our analytics, um, a bunch of different things about, you know, how it's going, um, page views, what's been running, et cetera. And again, you can get more detailed um, analytics with Google Analytics, <coughs> sorry. We show in the amount of money that was raised to your goal, but that's not the entire amount of money that you that the campaign has raised. So in this case, um, it's thirty six hundred dollars uh, with a goal of twenty seven hundred. This is what's shown publicly because this is what your stated goal was. But with with us, you're actually going to be raising more. This is the number that would be shown publicly on another platform. So if you're ever doing uh, a comparison between how well uh, you know uh, somebody's campaigns do on one platform or our platform. You really do have to add in another, another 15 to 20% um, to out to the number that we show because we're not uh, including shipping in that number. And it kind of skews the, the numbers a little bit. Um, you can also see what the effective fee rate is. So here it shows 5.9%, but it's on nearly free. This is what the fee rate would be if there were not fee recovery. 
Um, and so let's go a little bit farther down and see what the payment breakdown was, right? So we've got $3,600 uh, came in online. None of it was offline. $573 of that is for shipping and $273 of that was recovered fees. Um, and so what that means is that if the, the platform fee was 5%, <clears throat> the payment fee is for 3.7%, but the effective fee rate with this campaign actually paid was 1.3%. Um, and then you can see here the payments volume, you know, when things came in, how many subscribers you have, how many Facebook shares you have, and what days the subscribers came in. Um, so that is, uh, that's kind of an overview of the analytics that we provide you. In Crowdfunder Professional, we provide some additional analytics, um, both at the campaign level and at the organization level. But, uh, but that's a really, you know, um, a really quick look at uh, what the analytics look like. Awesome. Thanks for going through that. Yeah. I wanted to also quickly show um, uh, on this campaign, sorry. Um, I also wanted to quickly show a little bit about the checkout experience. So let's say you decide you want this one, right? Um, so this is uh, cover two. You have to select the country it's shipping to because um, you may have not. And I'll, I'll show you in rewards setup what that means. Um, but but um, in this case, um, let's say you selected um, uh, cover two. But you can also, you, you also have the option to set up variants. Um, for every item. So think about it, you know, in the case of a, of a comic book, it would be different covers, um, or, you know, if it's in the case of a, um, of a, um, uh, some, some, like a t-shirt, it could be different colors or, you know, things like that, that, uh, people might want to choose as a variant and then they can select a quantity. We also have a pick up in person option, um, for those that, you know, that know that they live nearby you and they can pick it up in case they want to do that. Um, and so, the cool thing though, is that I'm going to get one of these. I'm going to select, uh, I want the regular trade dress on it, but I also want the digital version. And I also want cover D um, in the foil copy. And I also want, um, let's say this one with um, the metal copy, right? So all of these items now here are, are adding up and they're getting put into, um, you know, sort of a basket of sorts. And then when I go through to the next step, um, I, we ask people if they want to top up their contribution um, and if they'd like to just add a little bit extra. Uh, and you can actually customize this to say things like $5 to buy me a coffee or $10 to get me some lunch or $20 because I need a haircut or whatever it might be. Um, and put in your own images that you, if you want, that you can illustrate and make it a little more fun for people to encourage them to top it up a little bit. Um, then you can see all the items that were topped into the basket. And then here, cover fees for the cause. This is where we ask people to cover your fees. Um, and if you look at how it helps, it says your support means a lot. Uh, add a little extra to cover the processing fees. Um, this is optional and very much appreciated. Thank you. And people can opt out or they can uh, go, they can continue to do it. And like I said, most people do. Um, and then at the next step, um, PayPal. Uh, is available. Apple Pay. Um, we're in Canada, but if we were in the US right now, it would also show Venmo as an option. If I were on a um, Samsung device, it would show, or a uh, or a Google device, it would show Samsung Pay or Google Pay. Um, and then, of course, people can also pay with a credit card. And the nice thing about this is that we don't require anybody to create an account. They can check out as a guest, um, and it really makes the flow really go very nicely and very quickly. Um, and if they're using PayPal, then it's even better. They don't have to even uh, put their credit card or Apple Pay. They don't even have to put their credit card into the platform. Um, and so a lot of people that are more security conscious feel a whole lot better about um, making their, their showing their support and making their contributions through CrowdFunder than they do through other platforms. And because they don't have to create an account, um, it really doesn't uh, slow people down uh, from making their, their contribution. Uh, okay. So also, um, David, just one thing, if you go back to the checkout experience, just one thing I think it may not, but also does the conversion rate for you here. So you can see that it does right. say about 137 Canadian and you don't have to pay any. Um, so if you have any supporters in Europe or kind of throughout the world, you don't have to pay with the currency exchange rate kind of thing. And that is done and included in the um, the payment processing fee. So that's great to know. And it also will show them in their local currency. Thanks for adding that, Kimball. 
Um, I wanted to, to run through a couple of other campaigns really quickly. So this is a campaign uh, from Rich Tomaso um, that uh, did 145% of its goal. And, um, and when they finished their initial campaign of, I think it was 30 or days, it might have been 60 days, they left it open. And so this is still running. There are still people um, um, pledging to this, well, pledging, but supporting this campaign um, and, and buying this book. And so uh, this this campaign, you know, continues to raise money and to to um, uh, to provide support to this. Um, you know, some of the items are sold out, as you can see, um, and they're no longer available. But um, but when something is sold out, because you can in the in our backend set that, um, then you can um, uh, then it shows is sold out. I also wanted to show the analytics on this. This was a campaign that was done using simply free instead of nearly free. And so you can see that the effective fee rate is 4.1%, which was what the payment fees were, right? These are the real payment fees as they came back from PayPal or Stripe. Um, and so that was the effective uh, rate with somebody that uses Simply Free. Um, and so if we take a look at another campaign like this one and really quickly look at the analytics on it, this campaign used nearly free. And the effective fee rate here was 2.1%. Um, and so you can see that, um, 88% was the, the recovery conversion. 88% of the people, uh, chose to recover the fees and 78% of the fees were recovered. Um, part of this has to do with currency conversions and part of it has to do with, um, with, uh, PayPal, um, additional PayPal costs and stuff like that. Um, that's why, you know, it's not 88 and 88, but, um, but still for a 2.1% effective fee rate for a, a Canadian company that, that had have currency conversion on most of their um, uh, campaign is pretty good. But the other thing that I wanted to show you about this campaign is, do you see this? Black Eye Books, this is their logo. Our logo is gone. So on the front end, when this is shown to the public, they see Black Eye Books. Um, they don't see Crowdfunder. And so it's a really way, like we said, we're trying to help you build your audience, build your brand. It's another way that we support you in doing that. Um, and then here, here's one that I thought was interesting to share with you. This is a Burning Man campaign. Um, um, it didn't meet their goal, but they did it as a uh, keep it all campaign. So they were still able to get these funds. And on their in their analytics, what's cool is they switched mid campaign from simply free to nearly free. And their simply free transactions, the effective rate was 3.1%. Their nearly free was 1.1%. And so this is a really good way for you can, to see the difference um, between the two different models that we make available to you. And if you would like to switch between them at any point, you can also do that. Do we also, have David, uh, just yeah. a quick question? So uh, Tamika is just asking regarding the successful campaigns, were they successful because they already had a fan base? So crowdfunding, a, a successful crowdfunding campaign on whatever platform you're on is going to be all about your marketing. It really helps if you have uh, some fan base, even if it's a very small one, that really helps because that fan base can then help you promote um, uh, uh, beyond you know them just as your immediate audience. But um, crowdfunding campaigns are very much reliant on your marketing activity, on your activating your audience on uh, on your uh, ability to garner a uh, buzz and interest around your campaign. And there are a lot of ways to do that. Um, it is by by um, um, asking people to be on streams with them, talk about your campaign, by asking other creators that you know to uh, to post about it and to, so to uh, engage their audience around your campaign. Um, so just because you don't yet have your own audience doesn't mean that you can't activate uh, additional audiences. And I'd encourage you to look in the Creator Hub in the toolkits at the uh, build, buy, or borrow a crowd. I might have gotten those uh, uh, in the wrong order, but it might be borrow, build, buy. I don't remember. But uh, but I would encourage you to take a look at that toolkit, and it'll give you ideas on how to um, on how to expand your audience. And then also, for all or nothing campaigns, are contributors able to modify the reward before the campaign ends? So currently, no. Uh, with all or nothing campaigns, they um, when they select what they want, then that is what they've selected. They can contact you, um, and you can, uh, if you want to, you can cancel their current pledge, and they can make a new one, or they can actually just make a second pledge. 
Like there's no, there's nothing stopping them from, uh, you know, putting together one pledge and then doing a second pledge after that. The only challenge with that is, um, is of course that they'll have to pay twice for shipping. Um, but that is something that you can refund to them after the campaign, uh, in, you know, because you won't need that extra shipping cost. Um, but we are working on, um, uh, on setting up the ability for people to be able to modify mm -hmm. their pledge. Um, currently that's not something that we make available. So, um, as far as creating a campaign and editing a campaign, um, we have the story, the tabs, the picture and video layout, etc. So it's pretty straightforward, you know, where you would put in different items. The thing that I, you know, as far as the story goes, um, it's a story editor. It's pretty straightforward. You can pop in videos and images and, um, and, you know, uh, set up tables in order to structure things in ways that you want. Um, and, uh, the usual type of stuff, but I wanted to really quickly over jump over to the rewards, uh, and show you a little bit about what it looks like when you're creating a reward and setting it up. So we'll just pick one of the rewards that are here and hit edit. Um, and what you can see is you can, um, you can put a cover on it. This is the, the, an image on it. This is the image that shows up on the page. Um, and you put in the price. We also have the ability to do a flexible price. So you can set, you know, your, uh, suggested amount, a minimum amount, and then also a, um, a maximum amount if you choose to do that. And that gives the ability for people to, if they want to give you a little bit more on a reward to do that. Uh, you can put in a, a description here. Um, you can put in a pretty long description and remember this, it'll, it'll truncate it, but then it'll also, stuff will also show up on the, uh, the secondary page if you want. Um, and you can even include a link to somewhere else outside of the platform. Um, if you have more information about the reward, like for example, if you have it up on, um, on global comics, or if you have it, um, in, you know, some other place where people can take a look at, uh, at a bunch of pages, you can also include a link in there, uh, with more information. You can also set up variants, as I mentioned, uh, and the variants can have uh, a price associated with them. Um, so if you wanted to put in some additional variants, you can limit the total number of available items. You can limit it to one per contribution if you don't want people buying out too many of them um, and display the stats on there. And then um, limit the total amount of available for each variant if you wanted to do that. And then you can, if you want to, show uh, a delivery date. For shipping and fulfillment, um, you can do it anywhere in the world, uh, or you can select certain countries. In this case, they select the rest of the world as one price and the US is another price. Um, and then a cool thing that we have is add the add-on cost. So the way it works is that if people put you know multiple items into their card, you don't wanna be charging them all the full price for shipping for each item. So the first item or the whatever the most expensive item shipping-wise that's in that, that card, um, that's the, the base charge that they'll be charged. And then after that, there is uh, everything else is charged using the add-on cost. So it gives you a, a, a really good way to let people uh, buy a whole bunch of different things without it really increasing the cost of shipping for them. Um, and then you can also do digital fulfillment. And with digital fulfillment, you can put in the link. And as soon as the um, that particular's, particular person's pledge funds, uh, which could be immediately if it's a uh, if it's a keep it all campaign, they'll get a link uh, to the digital fulfillment where they can um, get what they want. And then also um, you can do promo codes for particular items, something that you can send out to uh, people that have uh, supported your campaign, other campaigns in the past, or people that, you know, just people that are get your newsletter or however you want to use the promo codes, you can use the promo codes um, and do that. So that's just a really, really fast look at rewards. Um, we're coming to near the end of our time and I wanted to make sure that I addressed any additional questions that we have. Um, so Kimball, what are we, what are we seeing? Yeah, absolutely. So you can definitely go ahead and type the questions into the question and answer function, or if you'd like to, um, we can unmute you. If you just raise your hand, we'll be able to unmute you and allow you to talk if you're having trouble vocalizing or typing it down. I know I'm like, definitely a chatty person, so definitely kind of the person that likes to ask questions um, <clears throat> over that way. But yeah, I'll just give a few minutes here just to let everybody type their, their kind of questions and also um, just give them a few moments here. While they're doing that, I wanted to show, if you'll recall, there was the additional contribution amounts. This is where you can switch it over to descriptive, put in an amount, add a picture, and then write out, you know, coffee or tea or sandwich or whatever it is that you might like to do. 
So that's another thing that, um, that you can do. All right, let's give everyone a few more minutes here. If, um, if anybody um, would like us to, uh, to set up some time with them, um, or if they have any other, um, any other additional questions, feel free to put your email in the, um, in the, uh, in the question or in the chat and, um, and we can reach back out to you to, 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 uh, to contact you about that. Yeah. So it looks like Tamika has two great questions here. So we'll be able to, will we be able to create a pre-launch page where contributors can buy rewards ahead of the campaign? So basically before it's launched. Um, so no, um, we don't have a, the ability for people to buy rewards before it's launched. Um, but what you can do is, um, uh, for that particular community, uh, you could let them know exactly the, the launch time and, and uh, have them come in first. Um, but we are working on a functionality like that that will allow people to uh, to come in and claim um, you know the first set of rewards. You can also set up rewards that can sell out. So you know early bird rewards um, if you wanted to uh, put a quantity limit on them and, and have them at a different price. Um, but no, currently we don't have the ability to uh to let people in before the campaign launches yeah and there is kind of a way to do that and david mentioned early birds what you can do is you actually are able to have your campaign public or private so if you want for an example if you have a newsletter you can kind of the way to work around it is have your campaign be private for a week and let them have access they'd only be able to have access if they have the direct link and then launch it to the public and the rest of your your team so that's kind of a way around it but we're like david said working on a, a larger functionality around that. And then also Tamika was wondering, can we calculate shipping after the campaign is over if we are shipping worldwide? Yeah, so what you would do in a situation like that is you would not collect shipping. Uh, you, wouldn't, you, would, you would say in your campaign that we're going to be collecting shipping after the campaign is over. Uh, and then you would need to reach out to people um, individually, um, calculate their shipping for them, and then, um, and then, you know, essentially find a way to, uh, to invoice them, which you can do via Stripe or PayPal. Um, it's not something that you would be able to process directly through the platform. Um, and, but, uh, but doing a, um, an invoice out of Stripe and PayPal is really pretty easy. Uh, if you wanted to handle shipping, you know, at the time of fulfillment versus at the time of the campaign. Awesome. And just to echo what David said, so if you're wanting to just get some time with one of our specialists here, please feel free to just uh, put your email in the question and answer function or in the chat, and we'll be able to make sure that it is private so, you won't, so people won't be able to see if you don't want to have everyone have your email, which is definitely something I would do. So just please feel free to put it in. We'll be able to reach out to you and connect and set some time up to go over through any kind of questions. And also, as David mentioned, we do have our office hours through our creative hub twice a week um, where you can drop in and just, again, ask any questions surrounding the platform, any kind of strategy questions or anything like that. And you don't have to sign up or register. You can just pop in, pop out. And those are on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, there's one in the morning and one in the afternoon. So they're really easy to kind of come in and get support um, and ask any questions that you kind of had after this or if you have them later tonight. I know so I'm a midnight snacker and I'm like, oh, I had a great question for that meeting today. So definitely able to go ahead and kind of um, come back to that as well. So let's give everyone just a few more seconds here um, and then I'll turn back to Dave over to get uh, wrapped up. We have another great question here from Vito. Can we go from an individual account to a publisher at a later date? Yes. So um, you can, in fact, you can have multiple publisher accounts uh, um, or, I mean, we, we basically refer to them as organizations. Uh, so if you start out with just a personal account, but then you want to add uh, an organization, you can add an organization that you will be administering. Um, and then you can set up campaigns under that organization as well. Um, that would be crowdfunder professional um campaigns so absolutely if you want to uh um if you want to set up a publisher account 
you set it up once your personal account is set up, um, you are, I mean, you can do it at the same time, but once your personal account is set up, um, you can absolutely add in uh, an organization and that would be a professional account. Thanks for asking that. Okay, um, it seems like um, um, we are done. And um, so uh, before we wrap up, I just, again, I'd like to, um, I'd like to thank uh, Council Spring for inviting everyone to attend this webinar. Um, if you do have any um, support needs that you have from them, please do reach out to them, sales at grecoprinting.com, and they'd be happy to help. Um, we really, really uh, appreciate the partnership that we have with them and the discount that they are offering for campaigns that are on Crowdfunder. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. Um, and I, um, I think that's it. So thank you everyone for attending. Um, I apologize that we did go and it's long um, and it is late in some parts of the world. So uh, with that, we'll sign off. Thanks, Kemble, for co-hosting with me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for hosting it. And also thank you so much for everyone for their great questions and engagement. It really helps along the webinar. And um, again, be sure to check out the Creator Hub of the live events for other amazing webinars that we host from our team and office hours if you wanted to chat. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye now. Bye.